Let's compare creating the base extrude of a part in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. First, I am here in SOLIDWORKS. Let's start off with a new part. Okay, let's make some datum planes visible. Just going to create a real simple sketch. The point of this video is not about sketching, but let's jump into sketch mode and make some lines. Okay, that's good. Let's now put in some dimensions. And I'm left clicking to place the dimension. I'm very much used to doing a middle mouse click from Creo Parametric. Let's just plug in some values in here. Doesn't really matter. Okay, great. To get out of sketch mode, I will click on the exit sketch button. And let's rotate the model. Let's turn off the display of our different planes. And now to create my first extrude, we'll click on the extruded boss base button. And now it's prompting me to select a plane on which to sketch the feature cross section or select an existing sketch. So let's pick on the sketch. You can see a preview of the geometry. And there we have an arrow. You can use the arrow to drag out the depth manually if you want. Let's take a look at the panel that we have over here for creating the feature. So first off, we have a drop down list that allows you to choose where the extrude is going to start from. And by default, it is set to the sketch plane. But if you had a surface or some kind of vertex, you could use that instead. Here we have an offset option, and I'm going to offset it, let's say, a distance of 10 from our sketch plane. So there you see how the feature is created. Now for the depth options. So you have a drop down list, and instead of blind, you could choose up to a vertex or up to a surface, offset from another surface, up to a body, or you could use the mid plane option. So with the blind option, you're just entering in a value, and it is going to be that length. And if I choose instead to do mid plane, well, now we're offset from the sketch plane a distance of 10, but then it's putting half of this depth on one side of the feature and half of the depth on the other side of the feature. Let's go back to blind. And when I have blind depth in direction one, you can check the box and specify if you want to have a depth in the other direction as well. Let's use a value of 30, say, in the other direction. So that's how you can configure depth in both of the directions. Let's turn that one off, just have a single depth direction. And next up that we have over here, you have a button that allows you to turn draft on or off. And you can use the arrows to crank it up or down. You also have the ability to draft outwards. That way I'll be able to do a much bigger value. But let's turn off the draft option. Here's another option for creating a thin feature. And a thin feature is going to add the thickness by default to the outside of the model. Here you can see that we have a depth of 10. I'm going to make that smaller just so that I'll be able to flip it. And so you can choose to go to the inside or to the outside using that particular button. From the drop down list, you could choose if you want to have it be added symmetrically about the sketch. That's what the mid plane option does. Or you could choose two direction and with two direction, let me choose another value in here. So you can have different thicknesses on either side of the sketch. And let's change this back to one direction. There's also a cap ends option over here where you can see that it's sort of like makes it look like it's a part that was shelled in a way. And here we have the depth of the capped ends that you can specify. Let's uncheck that so that we can see into the part. And now that we are finished with the boss extrude, we can hit the check mark. 
Now, let's say that I wanted to create this as a non-solid feature. Let's say that I wanted to create a bunch of different surfaces and work on them. Well, you don't have a surfacing option within the Boss Extrude feature because this is going to add material. This creates solid features. Also, once I hit the check mark out of here, if I wanted to remove material, that would be with the extruded cut command. So this in a way is sort of like if you use Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier, you had the menu manager over on the right hand side of the screen, you would use commands. Can't believe I still remember this. Feature create solid cut or feature create solid protrusion. So you could either do a cut or a protrusion and once you decided that you couldn't change from a cut to a protrusion. So that's one difference versus Creo Parametric. And you also had feature create surface. I forget what the other cascading menus were in there. It's been 20 years, give me a break. Don't blame me. Uh, but let's say again, if I wanted to make this as a surface, well, by default, the surfacing commands are not in the interface. If you want to see the different surfacing commands, move your mouse over one of the tabs and then you can right click. And here we have the tabs option. Right now you can see that we've got feature and sketch. And then we've got some of these other ones over here. I'm probably going to turn some of these off because I really don't need them. Because uh, I don't plan on doing any cam stuff. But Let's right click over here and then go to tabs and here we have a surfaces tab and there you can see that. Let's right click and go to tabs and turn on the sheet metal tab as well. So now when I go to the surfaces tab, here we have the ability to create an extruded surface, revolve surface, so forth and so on. If I go to the sheet metal tab, well, here's where you have the ability, say, to convert a part to sheet metal and create your other different sheet metal features. Let's jump over to Creo Parametric and see how it compares. Okay, here I am in Creo. Let's hit the new button to create a brand new part and I'll just use the default template. Let me turn on the display of my planes. Again, I'm just going to jump into sketch mode. Let's go to our sketch orientation and just sketch in basically the same shape that we did over there. Do, do, do. And let's change some of these different dimensions. Let me see if I can remember what I used over on the other one. I don't remember. I'm just plugging in stuff. Let's, the actual dimensional values do not matter. So why am I acting like they do? Uh, let me plug in the numbers and there we go. All right, let's jump out of sketch mode. And now to create this as an extrude, hey, here we have the extrude tool. You can see that we have the ability to drag the depth. And if we take a look at the dashboard for this feature, here we can just toggle it from a solid to a surface if we want to. And if you're doing it as a surface, you have the option to cap the end so that it looks like a solid. Let me turn off my plane display. Let's go back to creating this as a solid feature. And when I go to solid feature, the capped ends option goes away. Here's the remove material button. And by the way, if you click on the left mouse button, you're going to get a mini toolbar, which also allows you to create this as a surface. Uh, remove material is not available because you actually have to have material in your model before you do a cut. It's not going to let you do a zero by zero right at the beginning. And similarly, we can create a thin walled feature. And right now we have the thickness of the feature. Here's what's called a dimension toolbar where you can toggle the direction of the material being added. And this one has a three way toggle where you can go between adding material to the inside of the sketch, symmetric about the sketch, or on the outside of the sketch. Let's use a value, four should be good. And let's see some of the other different options that we have inside of here. Well, here we have our side one and side two depths. 
which you can also get to from right mouse button. So side one depth, I can do blind, I can do symmetric, or I could do two selected. So that would allow me to select if I wanted to go to another plane, a point or vertex or another surface. That's the way that I could do that. Here we have the symmetric depth. Let's go back to a blind depth and we can also do a blind depth in the side two direction so you can drag it this direction you can also drag it in the other direction so that sort of accomplishes what you had from that offset option in solidworks but again we have our different numbers in here i'm not going to bother changing the values we have a body options tab where this geometry is going to go into the body that already exists in here, but if you wanted to, for some reason, you could leave body one empty and have this being added to a, another body that is created. And the properties tab, this is where you can change the name of the feature if you so desire. And then we can hit the check mark, and in that way, we have created our first extrude, our base feature in Creo Parametric. One thing that I forgot to show, let's edit definition of the extrude, and I am going to get rid of the side 2 depth, and then also get rid of the thickness. That way, now I can add taper to the model, so that way I can have draft on here. You can see that we can drag this in order to specify the amount of taper that we want to have on the model. You can also get to that from the options tab. Here we have add taper, change the dimension to whatever value that you want. Let's just do about four degrees and hit the middle mouse button or the check mark. And in that way we have our base feature created. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.